diving, diving in, and we'll see where the spirit takes it all. Armel had an experience in the bathroom today where she again lost touch with the world. <laughs> What is this? What is this for? Yeah, it's like I feel that truly the more we just immerse ourselves in the presence that we are and accept accept the truth of who we are, the more we just can't understand the world anymore. It just doesn't make sense. And that's been my experience a lot those last months and weeks and days and just keep going deeper and deeper where just even the basic things of life um, there seems to not make sense anymore and um, there's just a silent watching of the play that is unfolding but there isn't any understanding judgment opinion idea about it it's just how it is and it is very restful and it is very joyful because there isn't a, an, involvement, an involvement with it or any idea or desire that things could be or should be different than what they are. They just are the way they are and it is very peaceful. So a lot of times in, in the Christian vernacular, Christianity, there's always talk about the less judgment. And usually it had, for most people, it had very fearful connotations um, because the ego kind of projected it onto God that there would be some kind of reckoning or some kind of an accounting. And I think somewhere deep inside we, we know that there is a divine law, but, but also we know that the accounting is one of just opening up to pure love. You know, that's what it means to account for yourself, not accounting for time, because God didn't create linear time, but accounting for love in your heart, coming home, like claiming your inheritance, going, wow, thank you. So, when Armel was talking about her experience in the bathroom of really just losing awareness of what the world was, it reminds me of of the, the last judgment is spoken about in the Course in Miracles. And so when I got to it, having been raised in Christianity, I was just very curious to see what the last judgment was put to words. And here it is. It's, it's pretty soft. <laughs> holy are you, eternal, free and whole, at peace forever in the heart of God. Where is the world, and where is sorrow now? That's the last judgment. Very different from what I would have anticipated growing up in Christianity. It's so soft. In this world, we're so accustomed to the timeline and beginnings and endings. Oftentimes, we, we celebrate, uh, like the birth of a new child, we, have, we celebrate certain beginnings. Um, sometimes we celebrate endings too, like retirement parties, um, leaving for vacation. <laughs> we know we can celebrate those, but but really the experience that Armel was talking to me about, I've had those experiences, and it's it's as if it's kind of like a reverse amnesia, like like we we were in God, we were with God, we were in heaven, we were in bliss, and then there was an amnesia where we forgot that natural state of perfect oneness and took on fragmentation and imagination and images instead of that eternal, abstract, ethereal bliss. So there's been an amnesia, and now I do feel like on our way back to that remembrance of of the Kingdom of Heaven or of Nirvana or whatever, there's like a reverse amnesia going on. And that's what I think of when I hear you speak, because it seems like you're forgetting everything. Yeah, yeah, I have more and more experiences where I don't understand 
what people tell. I don't understand what's spoken at all. Um, what is great is that I don't feel I need to. <laughs> so there's, there's absolutely nothing, there's not a problem with that because I so trust that whatever words need to be spoken will be given by the Spirit and that it's really involuntary. Um, this experience that we have to realize we've never been the doer of life, we've never been you know, the doer of anything, we never did anything right or anything wrong, and that is accepting our true innocence, is that life has always been happening by itself, it's always been spontaneous and involuntary. And so it's remembering that, that there was never anyone living this life to start with. So it's not like something is leaving because it was never there, it's more a rediscovery that what always was, what always is and will ever be. And, and I do feel that that's, that's really what it is about. Um, I, yeah, it's just happening so, so much more, like almost on a daily basis now. And it was really profound because I found myself in the bathrooms and I had no idea what I was doing there. And I could see the body doing whatever it needed to do. <laughs> But I couldn't understand, like, this is so strange. But it just really felt like, why do they do that? It's like I remembered, like, I don't know, thoughts or feelings when I was a little girl and that I just didn't understand the world or didn't understand anything of what was happening. And it was just the same experience, like, what is that? Like, why do they do that? But really, um, I, I say that several times, like quite a lot to David lately, just that I really don't feel I am in this world, or that my experience is one of this world, it truly is not. And I feel that's really the invitation when we share and extend in gatherings or talks, is just that that is our true nature to all of us. We've never been in this world. Uh, we were really never born. It's just all an idea, and that's where the spiritual path is all coming back to and leading, to remembering our true nature, to remembering that we, knew we were never anything else but this love that we were talking about this morning in uh, the service. And those experiences just remind me of that, definitely, because there isn't an identification at all with the experience that seems to be lived or with the body. There's just a, a very silent and quiet watching of it, but no, no judgment or no relation, really. It's, I feel like I'm unable to relate to whatever's watched. Yeah, and what's beautiful about that is, is that when you keep forgetting everything of this world, you also forget all of your spiritual experiences as well. Reminds me of a time when I was down in uh, Florida, and a friend of mine was with me, and we went to a, a spiritual center down there in Florida, and made a big circle in the room, and I think there was probably 40, 40, 45 people in the circle, big circle all the way around the room. And I forget how I opened it up, but I just asked people to just share meaningful experiences that they've had in their awakening journey. And every single one um, had quite amazing stories of, of, of a child, a, a daughter who had died and had returned to her parents in a vision and stood smiling along the bedside, kind of letting them know that there was nothing to fear in death. And there were out-of-body experiences, there were near-death experiences, there was teleportation experiences, tele telepathic experiences. I don't know if I've ever heard such a display. Um, there was like 45 people, and the next one would go, and then the next one, and everyone was, oh, and the next one. Anyway, the friend who was traveling with me, her name was Beverly, she was sitting next to me, and they were going to go all the way around. And as they all shared all their experiences, she just started to just shrink in her chair. Because she would be like one of the last ones. And, and she thought, I haven't had any of those. And no experiences like those. They just got more spectacular as it went along. 
And it, I remember it was raining outside, and the closer it came around to her, I guess she must have just had this feeling like, I don't even belong here. I don't even belong in this group. She was so embarrassed and shameful because it was a judgment going on, like, look at them, look there, wow. She'd been in the convent for years and other things, but just, she'd never had anything like that. And when it got close to her, she just leaped out of her chair and she burst out of the doors and she went running as fast as she could out in the rain, down the road. So I just paused everything and I went walking down in the rain, you know, to catch up with her and just came to her and just held her in the rain. And I just assured her, I said, you know, it's not really about the phenomenon. The phenomenon isn't, isn't the love, it's just people giving them their mind permission to open to this vast love. But the vast love isn't the phenomenon. And I just told her, I said, you know that you could completely wake up to God and completely return back to heaven without having any phenomenal experiences. And she was like, oh. It was just again the reminder that we have to let the Spirit be in charge of those. And for some, they would not be given visions and these kind of things because the ego would, would take it and, dis and use it in some kind of destructive way. Like it does with psychic powers. There are a lot of times when I hear stories of people who, who move along spiritually and they develop very high psychic abilities and then the ego hijacks the psychic ability. They end up on Dionne Warwick's psychic hotline or something, you know, wondering where did I go with the wrong turn, you know, like trying to make money, I've turned it into another career. But it was such a beautiful gift when it first came. And then they actually lose the ability. Sometimes I hear people get them and then the ego misuses them and then it's, it's gone from awareness. The gift is, is taken away because it's, the ego just hijacked it. And so that really strikes me. And when I hear our mouth speaking too, it reminds me of my grandmother Lillian who lived to be 99. And she was such a loving woman, just mm, such a symbol in my life of absolute unconditional love always, always reflecting God's love to me. We would have conversations, she would, you know, be maybe in her 60s or 70s or 80s, she'd say, I just can't believe God would send anybody to hell. <laughs> and I'd say, me either. You know, we'd have, those are the kind of conversations we have. She couldn't, she was Christian her whole life, but she couldn't believe that God would send anybody to hell. And I'd say, that doesn't sound like God. She said, no it doesn't. I just think God is love, she'd say, very matter-of-factly. And as she grew older, uh, when she was a younger woman um, and her grandmother was dying, or her mother was dying of pneumonia, um, her sister couldn't even stay in the room because the lungs were filling up with fluid. And my grandmother was so tuned into spirit that she just went and wasn't frightened at all by the death of her mother, just laid at her bedside, just caressing her forehead as her mother was having trouble taking her last breath, getting very heavy. She said, just rest, just rest. And, and then having her brother, who was there too, you know, recite the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Just the most peaceful passing, because she, she didn't really think it was anything frightening about the physical death. And then after her mother passed, um, she saw her mother in a vision of just in a, a very young, um, wearing a white kind of veil and with a beautiful smile on her face, smiling to my grandmother Lily and just helped us to say, it's wonderful. Don't ever take a concern for death of the body. And so Lily lived to be 99, but when she was in a nursing home um, in her in her 90s, um, she was diagnosed with dementia. And for a lot of people who've dealt with people with Alzheimer's and dementia, it's, it's, it's a struggle for the ego, because the ego believes that the memories are the love. So 
So Alzheimer's and dementia are like this sense of, oh no, she doesn't know who I am, or he doesn't know who I am anymore, like she's lost it. And there's a grieving that goes on, but it was the opposite for Lillian because she was, she started to forget the world completely. And I would some days go and visit her and I would just come and I would push her around and she was legally blind then, and she would just treat me like I was anybody else. Sometimes she'd let me push her all around the nursing home, and then finally she'd go after maybe 45 minutes, Dave, is that you? <laughs> she'd be having the best time. It didn't matter. Grandson, anybody, you know, it was all the same. And then I would go in there, one time I went in there and um, I looked all through the nursing home and, I, and it's like a ghost town. I said, where is everyone? They were all back in the cafeteria and there she was in a wheelchair, legally blind, leading them in, in hymns from the Bible that she all knew by heart. <laughs> and she couldn't remember the person that she had lunch with. <laughs> and she could just sing all these beautiful hymns and recite the 23rd Psalm, I can't even recite it verbatim still, and she would be in dementia, and she could go through the whole 23rd Psalm. And then whenever she'd say, I'm forgetting everything, I think I'm losing memory of this whole world, they say, well, obviously you just remember what you need to remember, because you've got a very sharp mind when it comes to hymns, and the 23rd Psalm, but she couldn't remember those other things. She was going through an awakening phase, where she was actually giving herself allowance to forget the world and to just rest in the heart of God. And that, that reminds me of that. It's, it's a beautiful thing to be able to give yourself permission to rest in the heart of God and not to have this part of the mind that's saying something's going wrong, because in the world, the world diagnoses memory loss as a big problem a very, very big problem, and spiritually, the deeper you go in this, you start to realize that, that if you've authentically got to the point where you're just giving your, your whole soul over to God, that you go into this deep state of stillness, and you actually lose track of the memories. And when I do all these talks, I, people say, well, you, you certainly pull from all these parables, and you quote different people, and you have all these things that come through, and I say that that's the, the Holy Spirit just dipping into the pool of the, of the consciousness, the cosmic consciousness, and just pulling forth parables and things that are inspiring and blessing and helpful. But it's not a, it's not a, a, a trait of David. I don't think I my, myself as having a photographic memory, but I can remember song lyrics or anything that comes just beautifully crystal clear, but it's the Holy Spirit doing it through me. I, if somebody came up to me and said, give me the lyrics of that song, I'd say, mm, I don't know, but if, I, if I'm in the flow of the Spirit, the whole song can come out completely. Because it's involuntary. The Spirit is just using us to bless. There's no sense of personal accomplishment. There's no sense of anything else with that. It's just totally to bless, to heal and bless.